Today, I'll be showing how to use Chimera OS, which is a unique Linux gaming distro that provides a hassle-free console-like experience. It's the perfect operating system for a living room PC where gaming is the main priority. It's also a great choice for PC gamers who want to move away from Windows but don't want to spend the effort of learning a new operating system. Everything you need is pre-installed and ready to go, and it provides a very similar experience as the Steam Deck does, but it's compatible with any desktop or laptop that has an AMD GPU. Now I previously made a video called Linux Gaming for Noobs Choosing a Distro, where I explained the differences between various distros and gave several suggestions for gamers who are thinking about switching to Linux. Most of the distros I suggested are general purpose distros, which means not only can they do gaming, but they're also a solid choice for doing work or anything else you might want to do on your PC. So if you're looking for a general purpose distro that can do it all, then I suggest watching that video if you haven't already. But for systems where you'll just be playing games, then Chimera OS might be a better choice since it provides a hassle-free console-like experience. So let's first take a look at some of the details provided on their website and then I'll guide you through the process of installing it and running some games. The link is in the video description. Let's start with the About section. Some of the key features are it's easy to install, it comes with a powerful browser-based app that manages all your non-Steam games, it's minimal and only comes with what you need. It provides a truly out-of-the-box experience. It automatically stays up to date in the background without interrupting your games. And it supports controllers from all the major consoles. Now the game section provides a list of games which have been verified to be working, but keep in mind that this isn't a complete list. And even if your game isn't listed here, there's a good chance it'll still work perfectly fine. You can also check ProtonDB for more details on compatibility with certain games. Now the hardware section provides a list of all the handheld devices that are supported, including the Steam Deck. You can also see which features are currently supported or not for that particular handheld. Now let's click on the download tab which also provides the hardware requirements if you're using a desktop or laptop PC. You'll need at least 8GB of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and a Radeon RX 400 series or newer GPU. Nvidia and Intel GPUs are not supported at this time. Hybrid graphics and virtual machines aren't supported either. You'll need to make sure a single TV or monitor is connected, and also a keyboard to start the installer. Secure boot must be disabled, and the same goes for Intel Rapid Storage technology. Dual booting multiple systems from a single disk is not supported. And finally, Legacy BIOS is not supported either. None of these requirements should be an issue for any modern system with an AMD GPU. So now let's go over the installation process. After downloading the image, you'll need to flash it to a USB drive. It's recommended to use Etcher for this, as other methods might not work. For example, if you followed my previous video on Ventoy, then this is an example where it probably won't work and you'll need to use Etcher instead. Now restart your PC and boot from the flash drive and you'll see a loading screen similar to this. After about a minute the installer will start. Now select which drive you want to install the OS to. You'll be asked to confirm this selection. Keep in mind that this drive will be completely erased, so make sure it's the one you want. Now the installer will begin copying files to the drive which will take several minutes to complete. Once it's done, select the reboot option and your system will boot into your new operating system. The first time booting it'll take several minutes to set things up and then you'll be taken to this screen where you can select your language. You'll need to use a keyboard until we're able to set up a controller through Bluetooth. Alternatively, you can also use a wired controller as well. If you're using a keyboard, Press the arrow keys to move around and press enter to make a selection. 
Next, select your time zone and then the network connection you want to use. Next, sign into your Steam account. And after that, we're ready to start using Chimera OS. As you can see, this is the same interface as the Steam Deck. Now the first thing I'll do is connect an Xbox One controller through Bluetooth. So press the escape key on the keyboard to open the menu, then go to settings. Here you can access all sorts of settings for your system and Steam. Now when it comes to display resolution, you might need to manually specify this or else it might default to 1080p. All you need to do is uncheck this setting here and make sure it's set to your desired resolution. Now I'll go to the Bluetooth settings to connect my controller. Since Bluetooth is already on, I'll simply press the pair button on my controller, and after about 20 seconds or so, you should see the controller pop up here. So simply select it with the keyboard, and it should pair up. Now that the controller is paired, I can use it to navigate instead of using the keyboard. You can modify the settings of your controller by going to the controller tab. But other than that, the rest of the settings here are the typical things you'd find in Steam. So I'll just push B to return to the main screen. Now let's install a Steam game. So I'll go ahead and start the download for The Witcher 3. Now that it's done, I'll launch the game and give it a minute to start for the first time. And now we're in the game. And as you can see, it's working great and performance is very smooth. Since I'm using a mid-range GPU, I decided to reduce the game's resolution to 1080p, but it still looks really crisp thanks to the driver-based upscaler. But anyway, installing and running the game couldn't have been any easier. No need to download any drivers or additional applications, it simply just works. Just like running a console. There might be a handful of games that require you to change to a different Proton version, as I'll show here in a minute, but generally speaking, the vast majority of games will run straight out of the box. So now I'll exit the game and show how to install a non-Steam game. Go back to the settings and this time go down to Power. Here's where you can put your PC to sleep, restart, shut down, or change accounts. But this is where you can also switch to desktop mode, so that's what I'll do now. As you can see, Chimera OS also provides the GNOME desktop, so you can use it as an ordinary PC as well. Now click on this button here to view the installed apps. Then click on the Chimera app. Also, since I'm running a 4K monitor, I'm gonna go to the settings so I can change the display scaling to make everything bigger and easier to see. Alright, so here's the Chimera app. As you can see, there's a long list of consoles here. If you're into emulation, this app makes everything super easy to run. However, I won't be going into details on emulation. You'll also notice a GOG app is here, making it easy to install your GOG games. There's also an option for Flathub if you want to install additional gaming applications such as Lutris or Bottles. But for today, I'll be installing a game from the Epic Games Store, so I'll go ahead and click that, and then click this link here to sign into my account. After signing in, you'll want to copy this authorization code here. Then go back to the previous tab and paste the code. Click Save to save this login, then you'll be asked to create a password and type it a second time to confirm. Then press Continue. Now click this button to install a game from your library. As an example, I'll install Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. So I'll press the install button here to start the download. Now it's done installing. To go back to the library, you can click the menu button up here. Then if I go back to Epic Games, you'll see the installed games listed here. But it turns out, if we want to play the game, we'll need to go back to Steam. To do this, click on the tab on the top left here, then go down and click on Show Apps. Now click on Game Mode, and it'll take you back to Steam. Now in order to play non-Steam games, push B to go to the menu, then click on Library. Now navigate through the tabs on the top and go to Non-Steam. If you'd like, you can click the Add Chrome button to make it easier to play these games from your desktop, 
but this isn't necessary and I'm fine with launching them through here, so I'll press not now. Now I'll click the game and then push play. Now something to keep in mind is that the default Proton version will work for the vast majority of games, but certain games will require a different version. As you can see here, the opening videos for Tony Hawk aren't showing. This is because they're playing a video file that isn't supported by the default Proton version because of licensing reasons. This only affects the videos and the rest of the game works fine, but it would be nice if these videos worked. So, I'll exit the game so we can switch to Proton GE, which does provide the necessary codecs for video along with other improvements and fixes. So, I'll go to the game settings here, then go to properties. Now go to compatibility and check this box to force a specific Proton version. In most cases you'll want to select the most recent version of GE Proton. In this case it's version 9-11. Like I said, Proton GE provides a number of different bug fixes and improvements over the standard Proton. So if you're having issues in a particular game, then chances are this will fix it. But again, be sure to check ProtonDB.com for compatibility. And in some cases you might also need to enter custom launch options, which can be entered in the shortcut tab here. Now I'll go back and launch the game. And as you can see the videos for the opening credits are playing fine this time. And the game itself plays extremely smooth as well. Overall I've been extremely impressed with Chimera OS, and I think distros such as this can be a game changer when it comes to gaming. Many people have been getting tired of the direction Microsoft is going with Windows, and are open to a Linux alternative, but learning a brand new operating system does take effort, so it's not always a smooth transition for everyone. But thanks to distros such as Chimera OS, I think more and more users will now have the confidence to completely ditch Windows. Even if you're not annoyed by Microsoft, you should still consider Chimera OS for its console-like experience, which actually makes it easier to use than Windows, and is perfect for a living room or home theater setup. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the short introduction to Chimera OS. I didn't go over every detail, but I think I covered all the essentials to get you up and running. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the video description for its documents so you can check those out if you want more details. If you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment and let me know how your experience has been with this distro. Also if you enjoyed the video then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.